Hello everyone, God bless you. Thank you for joining us online for our services. I am excited about this weekend's message. We are going to have communion uh, at the end and I'll, I'll explain a little bit about that when we get there. And uh, I want to jump right into this. We've been talking about this idea of Jesus, uh, who is the cornerstone, the foundation that everything else is built on. And I started this uh, series, I think it was six weeks ago or something like that, uh, called Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Very simple idea uh, that comes from Acts chapter 4 and the discussion that Peter has uh, with the religious leaders. Uh, they confront him about a miracle that's taken place, uh, and Peter isn't shy uh, about telling them what's happened and declaring that the, the name of Jesus over this whole thing and he tells them in acts 4 verse 11 jesus is the cornerstone salvation is found in no one else for there's no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved that's how it started uh the whole thing this idea that you know what it's just all about jesus sometimes I make it so complicated. Uh, churches make it complicated. Denominations, uh, theology. I mean, you know, all those things are, are good things. Uh, but we overcomplicate things, right? That's what, the, that's what the Jewish people did during the lifetime of Jesus. And that's what the Christian people have done in the 2,000 years since Jesus' death and resurrection. We have overcomplicated what we're doing this is all about jesus it, it just it, he's the foundation everything is built on loving him it's not as complicated as we made it uh, and and hopefully this sermon uh doesn't overcomplicate it because it, i i started off simple and it ended up getting complicated it got away from me i don't know how it happened um, here's what i was thinking about i i, I was thinking about uh where you know I'm going to encourage you to have communion when we're all done, even though I don't have the elements. This weekend, we'll be taking communion uh, in person, and I, and I hope that you do that when we're done. I, and when I was thinking about communion, I, I thought, you know, I was just thinking about the glory of God and, uh, you know, that, that Jesus, Jesus died for me. Jesus died for you. Uh, and I was thinking about the glory of God, and I was thinking about that we need to give God the glory that is due to him. Um, you know, because there, there's a purpose in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, yeah, our salvation, certainly. Uh, John 3, 16, God so loved the world uh, that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh, uh, our deliverance, yes, you know, uh, John uh, chapter 8, uh, if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed. Our healing, yes, uh, it's certainly. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 24, by his stripes uh, we are healed. Our provision, uh, that's another good one. Philippians 4, 19, God will meet all of our needs according to his Glorious riches in Christ. Uh, uh, our joy, absolutely, John 15, so that my joy, Jesus said, may be in you and that your joy would be complete. Uh, our peace, uh, John 16, 33, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. Uh, okay, and that is just the tip of the iceberg. So many other wonderful promises that Jesus made that rest solely on him. He's the foundation because of his death and resurrection. Those promises are yes and amen. But, okay, now here's the thing uh, that, that I want to try to just talk about with you. Uh, I, I don't know if you've noticed this. I've started, I started noticing this, uh, uh, you know, maybe three or four years ago. I just think as, as I've been growing and, and God's been working on maturing me, uh, I started to take note of this, uh, uh, this idea. Before we got saved, our entire world revolved around us getting what we wanted from the world, right? That, that's what it, that's what it was all about before. Uh, before I got saved, everything was about me, and it was about me getting what I wanted. Um, then after we got saved, uh, our entire world became about us 
getting what we wanted for ourselves from God. Uh, so so we, we weren't saved and everything was about us. Uh, and then we got saved uh, uh, and then everything's still about us. Okay, that's what the question mark is. We got saved and is everything still about us? Uh, I don't know what you think about that, but I'm starting to think uh, that doesn't make any sense, uh, right? That, that something isn't right. Uh, I'm preaching a sermon series uh, in which I am declaring that everything is about him. Everything is about Jesus. So we have to make up our minds, which one is it? Is everything about Jesus or is everything about Jesus doing what I want him to do for me? Because those two things are not the same two things. And so the idea we are talking about this weekend is, is give God his glory, giving God his glory. Uh, and, you know, it's a little on the heavy side, so I hope that you'll watch it uh, and pray about it and just ponder it and consider it. Uh, let's consider something Jesus said, and then let's combine that with another principle that the Apostle Paul taught us in, in Romans, okay? So in the Gospels, Jesus said in John 10 and 10, I've come so that you might have life uh, and you might have life more abundantly. And then Paul said in Romans 8 and 6 uh, that the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So this is the idea that we are considering. Jesus said that if we lived in him the way he prescribed for us to live in him, then the result of that would, that would be that our lives would be truly alive. Okay, so when we give God his glory, we're alive. Uh, when we live to glorify God, we experience abundant life. Uh, it is all about Jesus. And when we make it all about Jesus, the overflow of that is life for our own lives. Now, conversely, okay, the, now let's uh, consider the opposite of that or, or the other side of that. When we take God's glory uh, and use it to further our own agenda, we die on the inside. When we live to use God's glory to glorify our own lives uh, instead of the life of God filling us up to overflowing and brimming out of us. Instead, what happens is the life of God drains out of us lower and lower until there's no life left. Uh, it's not all about us. When we make it all about us, the result is where we thought we would find life, instead we find death. The mind governed by the Spirit is life, the mind governed by the Spirit is dedicated to the purpose for which it was created, and that purpose is to glorify God and to bring glory to His holy name. Uh, the mind governed by the flesh is death, the mind governed by the flesh is dedicated to fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and that desire is pretty simple. Is that's what we want what we want, and we want to get what we want out of life. Have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered to yourself? Because I have wondered this to myself. Uh, I've wondered this. Why are church people as unhappy as world people? Hey, haven't you ever wondered to yourself? Uh, why are church people as dead on the inside as world people are? Uh, that's something I've questioned because uh, from, you know, from what we read in the scriptures, we know that it shouldn't be that way. Church people shouldn't be dead on the inside because uh, he lives, uh, we also live. He came to give me life, uh, life more abundantly, so I shouldn't be and we shouldn't be dead on the inside. Uh, now, I'm not claiming that I have the total answer, you know, the answer to the question, 
Uh, but I think I, that I, what I've got here is a pretty big part of, of uh, the piece uh, of that answer, at least. Uh, and the answer is why church people are as dead as people in the world. Uh, and the answer to that question is it's supposed to be all about Jesus. Church people are as unhappy as world people because when Jesus saved us, uh, our lives were supposed to become all about glorifying Jesus, but instead of making it all about him, we just found a new way to make it all about us all over again. Uh, I enjoy listening to John Piper preach. He said something uh, that struck me, and I want to share it with you. The chief end of man is to glorify God by enjoying him forever. If God's love made us central to his story and focused on our value, it would distract us from what is most precious, namely God himself. Love labors and suffers to enthrall us with what is infinitely and eternally satisfying, and that is God himself. Therefore, God's love labors and suffers to break our bondage to the idol of self and focus our affections on the treasures that are only found in God. So I wanted to close this series, Jesus, 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 by really hopefully driving home this idea that it is all about Jesus. That if it is not all about Jesus, then something in our lives is broken or something in our church is broken or something in the church is broken. Uh, if it is about what Jesus can do for me, then something is broken, right? We, we're going to pray uh, that if we need him to, that, that during the, our altar time, your communion time, your time alone with God, uh, that God's love will do for us what Pastor John Piper said, break it, the bondage to the idol of self and focus our affections on the treasure of God I want to pray for you, and I want you to pray for me. This is something I'm struggling with. Uh, maybe I'm struggling with it more than you are. Let's pray for one another. Father, it's all about Jesus. Everything is supposed to be about Jesus. He's the foundation. He's the rock. He, you, we're standing on him, uh, and we can't stand on anything else. Everything else is sinking sand. I ask that you would help us to have a revelation of, of what I believe the Spirit of God wants us to understand, and that is that God is glorious and God deserves all the glory, uh, and he saved me so that I could glorify him, uh, and, and he heals me so I can glorify him, uh, and he fills me so I can glorify him, that all of these things, it, it's not about me wanting to get something from him. It's about him saving me and me worshiping him and giving him all the glory that belongs to him so that his name can be magnified on the face of the earth. Help us to grab a hold of that idea and for our lives to be changed and for it to become true. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God, point number one, give God his glory or die. <laughs> yeah, that's a little severe, right? It's from Acts chapter 12. Uh, it's from the passage about Herod. You know what happens, uh, Herod put Peter in prison. Uh, and then, you know, Peter has uh, his miraculous escape as the church is praying for him. Uh, and then after that, we have this little section that describes uh, something that Herod did with his life uh, and that God wasn't happy with Herod at all. And it made me think about us and, uh, and are we giving God the glory? So, so point number one, give God his glory or die. 
Acts chapter 12, verse 19. Herod went from Judea to Caesarea uh, and stayed there. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him. After securing the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king, they asked for peace because they uh, depended on the king's country for their food supply. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne, delivered a public address to the people, and the people shouted. They said, this is the voice of God and not of a man. Uh, and immediately, because Herod did not praise God, Herod did not give God the glory, an angel of the Lord struck Herod down, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Uh, so sometimes, you know, sometimes I, I take a passage of scripture and I just break it down in all sorts of ways and I get super duper, uh, you know, just level after level of just tearing it apart and trying to explain it. Um, um, let's just not do that for a second with this passage. Okay, let's just look at the, what the words say and then look at our lives and, and say to ourselves, uh-oh, uh, I hope I'm not doing what Herod did because I don't want to experience what Herod experienced, right? L let's look at what it says and then let's look at our lives. Immediately, because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and he was eaten by worms and he died. Herod refused to give God the glory that was due to God's name, uh, and Herod paid for that with his life. Isaiah chapter 48, uh, verses 9 and 11 says this, For my own name's sake, I delay my wrath. This is God speaking through the prophet. Uh, for the sake of my praise, I hold my wrath back from you, so as not to destroy you completely. For my own sake, for my own sake, I do this. How can I let myself be defamed? I will not yield my glory to another. That is God speaking to the prophet about himself. And he says, I will not yield my glory to anyone else. In Isaiah 48, God withheld his wrath uh, from Israel for Israel's sake. He said, so as not to destroy them. And he issued a warning and he said, I will not let myself be defamed and I will not yield my glory to another. Now in Acts chapter 12, God is not as gracious to Rome as he was to Israel. Uh, on the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robe, sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. And they shouted, this is the voice of God and not of a man. Uh, and that day, God refused to yield his glory to Herod or to Rome. And immediately, Herod was struck down and he died. Give God his glory or die. Let's revisit some of those scriptures that I, that I opened up with when I said, you know, you know, what are the purposes of the death and resurrection of Jesus? Let's revisit some of those. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Why did God save you? Uh, God didn't save you for you. God saved you for him. God didn't save us uh, because we are glorious. God saved us because he is glory, glorious and he deserves glory from us. He saved us uh, so we could glorify him. Uh, John chapter 8, if the Son sets you free, you'll be free indeed. Uh, did he set us free so we could do whatever we want or did he set us free so we could do whatever he wants? He set us free so we could glorify him by doing what he wants us to do. First Peter chapter 2, by his stripes we are healed. Uh, does he heal us so we could keep on living the way that we've always lived? Of course not. He healed us 
so that we can live for him and we can live for his glory. We can live changed, transformed lives that magnify the name of the Lord. John 15, 11, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be completed. Jesus gave us his joy because his joy isn't like our joy. Uh, what, what do we enjoy, right? What do you and I enjoy? We enjoy getting what we want. Uh, but what does Jesus enjoy? Here's what the Bible says Jesus enjoyed. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. What is, we don't enjoy that. Jesus enjoys that. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus enjoys glorifying his Father's name, even if it means it's going to cost him something personally. John chapter 12, Jesus prayed. He said, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. Jesus said, that's not what I'm going to pray. He says, it's for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Do you see the difference there? Uh, Jesus basically said, this is my joy. Father, glorify your name. And then he says, now, now my joy is in you so that the prayers, uh, the type of prayers I prayed, you could pray those same things. That there is a striking difference between Herod and Jesus. I mean, I know that's totally obvious, right? Uh, if we do what Herod did, then we're going to get what Herod got. If we don't give God the glory, we will die. Uh, it may not look like what happened to Herod, right? Uh, I don't know a lot of church people that have been instantly struck down by God and died. Uh, but I do know a lot of church people that are slowly dying on the inside. I know that all of us should be alive, uh, and yet some of us are dead on the inside. What was Herod's, what was Herod's great offense? Herod's great offense is that he did not live his life to give God the glory that belonged to God's name. Because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down. The thing we have to be careful for and, and the thing we need to be watching out for and to examine our lives is, are we doing the same thing that Herod did? Because I think a lot of times we are. I know that there's a lot of times I do exactly what Herod did. When something good happens in my life, I don't give God the praise or the glory that he deserves. Uh, when something good happens, I think, wow, what a coincidence. Wrong. That, that's right. When something good happens, don't chalk it up to coincidence. Uh, give God the praise and glory for it. Uh, something good happens. Oh, I guess I just really got lucky this time. Wrong. Uh, when something good happens, don't, don't give luck the glory. Give God the glory. Uh, oh, I got that new job. Man, I, I am just, uh, I am really good. I guess I got that job because I deserve it. Uh, I would say, no, I'm not that great. Uh, and I probably don't deserve any of the good things that God's given to me. I'm not good. God is good. And God deserves the glory. Let's stop stealing God's glory. And now here's the other side of that. When something bad happens, I don't give God the praise that he still deserves to receive. And I know uh, that a lot of people who know me personally, they know uh, when I go through something tough, uh, uh, because it's obvious, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a one of those guys that mopes around. When, when life is hard and things get difficult, uh, uh, you know, I'm one of those guys that mopes around like Charlie Brown, hanging his head down with the music playing in the background, uh, and oh, woe is me, life is so hard. Uh, um, you know, people say, well, how are you doing, Mason? And the best I can muster up to answer is, 
well, you know, I, I guess that, you know, things are okay. Uh, that, that's a, God isn't glorified by, well, I guess things are okay. Uh, I'm not okay, I guess. Uh, I'm blessed. I know that I'm blessed. Uh, stealing God's glory is not just uh, taking God's glory from Him during the good times, uh, but stealing God's glory is also not giving God the glory He deserves, uh, even when we're going through some of those tough times. Is the money tight? God is still good. Uh, is the job difficult? God is still good. Uh, is your health up, up and, and down? God is still good. Uh, is the relationship rocky? God is still good, isn't he? Uh, are your emotions like a roller coaster? God is still good. He is still good. He's always good. He's good right now. Uh, he'll be good tomorrow, and he'll be good into eternity. And his glory demands that even in the tough times, I'm still raising my hands and praising his name uh, so that he gets the glory that he deserves. Now, I'll just tell you, just so, so you know, I struggle with that, uh, and, and probably a lot of people do. Herod refused to give God the glory that he deserved, and so the Bible says Herod died because of that. Uh, again, Romans 8 and 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. If we allow our minds to be governed by the flesh like Herod did, then we will die like Herod did. Uh, if we live for our own glory to get what we want, uh, we will not have the life of God flowing into us, uh, filling us up and overflowing out of us. Uh, now, if our minds are governed by the Spirit, uh, like Jesus' mind is, uh, uh, then we will experience life like Jesus experienced life. Uh, he said, because I live, you also live. Uh, if we live for God's glory, to give him the glory he deserves, uh, we will have the abundant life that Jesus promised we would have. So let's live for the glory of God, to give God glory, to give him the glory when things are going awesome, uh, and, uh, and to give him the glory when, when we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, give God the glory, because if we don't, we die on the inside. Now, point number two. Don't keep part of his glory for yourself. Talking about Acts chapter 5. Uh, you know, the, the story about Ananias and Sapphira. Don't keep part of the glory for yourself because you, you know where we're going with this. You know it's not good. You know Herod, he, he uh, refused to give God the glory and he died Ananias and Sapphira, they decided to sneak off with part of the glory, to hide a little bit of the glory, to keep a little bit back for themselves. Uh, and, and you know what happened? It was just as bad. They died just like Herod died. Acts chapter 5, a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, they sold a piece of property. Uh, with his wife's full knowledge, Ananias kept back a part of the money for himself. He didn't keep all of it. Uh, you know, we, the Bible doesn't tell us exactly how, what percentage uh, that he gave and that he kept, uh, uh, but we know that he had to give enough to make it look like he had, you know, had given uh, a certain amount. He only kept back a little part for himself. Right? He, he kept a part for himself. He brought the rest of it, put it at the apostles' feet, and then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart uh, that you have lied to the Holy Spirit uh, and you have kept for yourself some of the money you receive for the land? Uh, and Peter says, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? 
You haven't lied to human beings, but you have lied to God. And Ananias heard this. He fell down and he died. Great fear seized all who heard what had happened. And the young men came forward, wrapped up his body, carried him out and buried him. And then three, it says three hours later, Sapphira came in and she did the same thing. And the same thing happened to her. Right? She, she, she kept back apart for herself. Then she lied to the Holy Spirit and to Peter uh, and the church. Uh, and she fell down dead and they took her out and buried her beside her husband. Don't lie to the Lord. Don't keep back a part uh, of his glory for yourself. Don't lie to the Lord. Uh, when you got saved, what is it that you told Jesus? If you're like me and, and we're alike, uh, um, right? We, I mean, we're all humans. Uh, when you got saved, you, did, you told the Lord something like this. You told him, here I am, Lord. I surrender all. Uh, here I am, Lord. I give you my entire life. I uh, hear you. Here I am, Lord. I give you my whole heart. Here I am, Lord. I give you everything. Have it all. Take it all. Uh, no hidden rooms. No no secret passages. Here I am, Lord. Just take it all, right? Uh, uh, and now, if you're watching and you say to yourself, "Well, I never said that when I got saved. I didn't make that kind of commitment." Uh, here's the deal. If you didn't say that when you got saved and you didn't mean that when you got saved, then you didn't get saved when you got saved. Okay? <laughs> uh, I'm not talking about the words. I'm not saying you had to say exactly one of those phrases that I said, but I am talking about our heart, and your heart does absolutely have to take a position similar to this to get saved in the first place. Here I am, Lord. I surrender all. I give you my entire life. I give you my whole heart. I give you everything. Uh, your heart has to take that position for if you want to give your life to Jesus. That, that's what we say to him. That's what we mean uh, when we get born again, when we come to him. He, re he requires that we bring everything, that we surrender everything. So if God requires that when we come to him, we give him all, then let's not do what Ananias and Sapphira did, because if we do what they did, we're going to get what they got. Ananias and Sapphira came before the Lord, and they said what we said. They said, here we are, Lord, we surrender all. This, this is it. This is all of it. Here we are, Lord, we give you our entire lives. Here's the sum. It's everything. Uh, here we are, Lord. Uh, we give you our whole hearts. This is it. 100%. I didn't keep anything back. Uh, here we are, Lord. We give you everything. That's what they said. But secretly, they held back a little bit of what they had for themselves. They told the Lord he could have everything. But they had a little secret room on the inside. Where, where there were some things that they, they kept back a little part of, of their lives for themselves. If we do what they did, we're going to get what they got. They told the Lord he could have everything. But secretly they held back a little something they wanted to keep for themselves. And then they died. If you hold on to just a little piece of that unforgiveness, you're going to die. If you keep back just a part of that anger, you are going to die. If you secretly stash that lust away between your mattresses, you are going to die. If you hide that greed in a special account that your spouse doesn't know exists, you are going to die we can't hold back. Uh, we can't keep part for ourselves. Now, are you going to fall down dead like Ananias and Sapphira and be rolled up in a rug and taken outside? Uh, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, I'm saying uh, you will experience death uh, on the inside if you hold back from God. Uh, if you Do you wonder why that you don't have the life of God that Jesus 
showed us and that he talked about and that we see uh, when we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, and we look at that man Jesus and we see just the life uh, flowing into him and flowing out of him. Uh, uh, that great day of the feast, he says, come to me all you. Uh, if anyone's thirsty, let them come to me. From their belly would flow rivers of living water. Uh, and do you ever think about your life and, and think, where is my life? Uh, and maybe, and maybe, maybe not. Maybe that's not you. Uh, but if you've ever been to church, uh, I know you've experienced. I know you looked around uh, in a room full of people where there's a lot of defeat, uh, downheartedness, discouragement, uh, uh, heaviness. Uh, uh, there's no victory. The people aren't uh, aren't going forward with God. And you think to yourself, where is the life in this place? Where is the life in God's people? Well, what happens is we come to him and we tell him we're going to give him all, that we're going to give him access 100%, uh, not hide anything. But then instead of doing that, we keep a little something and we hold on to a little something and we hold back a little bit uh, uh, just in case we need it or want it or, or we're afraid to give it up. Uh, and, and then uh, we, we start to dwindle and die on the inside. We can't hold back. We can't keep part for ourselves. When we do, we die on the inside. God deserves all of the glory. We told him that we would give him all of the glory. And so we can't keep a little part of our lives just for ourselves. We have to give it all to him. Because if we keep any of it... If we keep any of it, we know what's going to happen. We're going to mess it up, right? If I keep a little something back for myself, I know what's going to happen. I am going to mess that thing up. I've got to get, I've got to bring my life before the Lord and lay it down and say, here I am. I surrender. Here it is. Here's all of it. I'm a broken mess and I know that I can't fix it. Lord, I give it to you. Fix it. <laughs> All right? And so that's what we're going to do. And, and that's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Right now, um, I'll, I'll read the passage of Scripture, you know, the communion passage. Uh, but I, and, and I don't want you to take communion right now uh, because I want you to take a moment. Let me read it, okay? Let me read what it says. Don't take the elements right now. Okay? Take them in a minute after you spend some time with the Lord. But let me read the passage. I received from the Lord what I passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Uh, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, uh, whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Uh, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Uh, and so, so what I want to encourage you to do, and, and I definitely want to, you know, just say this again, state this again. This, this was kind of a tough word, uh, and, and I definitely wasn't preaching, you know, at you. I was preaching a sermon to me as much as anyone else watching or anyone else that will be in this room. Uh, I, I know that there are things that I need to bring to the Lord and just surrender to Him afresh. Uh, and that's probably something we're going to have to do all the time, every day, right? To search our hearts uh, uh, and to look. We, we may come into his presence and give him everything. And then tomorrow we get up and we're struggling again with something. <laughs> the, you just keep on going back and keep on coming to him and keep on surrendering. Uh, so what I'm asking for you to do is take a moment now. Uh, and to decide and get with the Lord before you receive the elements and say, you know what, God, uh, I want my life to bring glory to you. Uh, I want you to get all the glory that you deserve. I, I don't want uh, I don't want to be like Herod and I don't want to be like Ananias and Sapphira. Uh, I want to give you all the glory that belongs to you. I want my life to be about glorifying you. Uh, and I don't want to hold back any of the things that, that I may have been holding back 
here I am, Lord, you know, and, and, and spend some time meditating on that, thinking about it, and just surrendering to the Lord, and then spend some time in communion with Him. Uh, and then just God bless you. Thank you for being a part of our online services. I pray uh, that you're doing well and that God's grace is being poured out on your life. Uh, and uh, have a beautiful weekend in Jesus' name. Amen.